Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back with another video from NC Hammer 23 I really enjoyed that uh, debunking video we did the other day, uh, the, well, that we checked out the other day, and I said I want to check out more videos. I miss checking out Naruto stuff. NC Hammer's a very entertaining guy, and uh, I <laughs> like how this is posted with his mouth just wide open like that. But um, we're doing You Know Nothing About Minato Namikaze, so we, I have checked out in the past, like, You Know Nothing About videos. They go in depth and more into uh, the character, the history, you know, everything about them. Minato is one of my favorite characters within Naruto, and I feel like since the one shot came out, people now have more of a better perspective on Minato, you know, timeline-wise, stuff he was able to do, etc. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, let's get into it. All right. I'll admit, I got into a real big Boruto hole there for a while, and pretty much all I talked about for a couple of months was Boruto. But, I mean, if that's the main source of uh, media that is out, you're going to, aren't you, really? One, that's because the manga's really good right now, hmm. and two, because numbers dictate what I do. However, I've seen a couple people, and by a couple people, I mean a lot of people in my comments and in my emails begging me to bring back a long, done-and-dusted series that I did what feels like eons ago. And that is a series that genuinely turned this channel into what it is today. Huh. My the You Know, know Nothing, nothing series. Cool. See, a lot of you that follow this channel for Boruto theories and Boruto breakdowns probably don't even know about this series. But in a lifelong commitment to never run out of Naruto Have I checked? Let content, I committed check myself my to doing a, I'm sure I've done know a few You Know Nothing series about every important character not, in Naruto. These videos are videos where I break out. down the backstories, motivations, and core components of some of Naruto's most beloved characters. I've done for the entire Akatsuki, multiple Hokage, and so many other people. But as I was scrolling through my old You Know Nothing Right, video, so here we are. I've only done You Know Nothing About Itachi, second favorite character, and You Know Nothing About the Anbu. So... If you guys want, I can check out some more of these you know nothing about videos. But let's uh, see how we go. I was pondering about which ninja I hadn't done yet. I realized something. I hadn't done my favorite character in the entire He's manga. so cool. Minato. He's so cool. Is weird because if there's one ninja who I know the backstory of and motivations of, it's Minato. And if there's one ninja from Naruto that people want to hear you talk about, well, it's Itachi, but then it's Minato. And well, no, because we had the vote. <laughs> I mean, technically, the people spoke out and chose. Thus, today, I want to get back to my roots and revive a series I haven't done in what feels like years. So let's see Just if I remember how to it. do it. Minato is one of the most prolific characters in Konoha's history. The he. Oh, mate. So important. Fourth Hokage, Konoha's yellow flash, the original child of prophecy. We Run on sight! <laughs> the highest test score in the history of the Shinobi Academy, and a man with a run on sight order from every go. There other go. ninja so village. Cool. So there is cool. nothing that Minato did that he did not inherently excel at, which makes a lot of people think of him as a relatively straightforward and simple character. But that couldn't be further from the truth. See, while Minato is both figuratively and literally a golden boy, he was also one of the deadliest human beings ever born and behind those blue eyes blonde hair an incredible smile laid the soul of a bona fide killer oh yeah child who grew up so talented that a village founded on keeping children out of the battlefield redirected its entire narrative to make sure he was out there as soon as possible a child placed in the exact opposite situation as his son as he was a child that had the hopes and dreams of an entire village thrust upon him at the ripe age of 10 years old yeah because it's um minato kakashi and Itachi were kind of like pushed to graduate as soon as possible to get them out there doing the bad stuff. And that 10 year old, though unmarred by things like the Ambu or the Root, was forced into situations much more perilous than even Donzo could have figured out how to place him in. Because, at least according to Minato's one shot, by the time that he was 14 years old, he was one of Konoha's premier military assets. Mm. Battling against the likes of Perfect Shinshuriki like Han and Ru Has that been put into physical print yet? Like, if it has, please let me know. I might be dumb. I just feel like it's not big enough to be its own book. Oshi, simultaneously. All while fighting. You know, like how the Obito backstory was thrown into the end of volume 27, leading into, like, Shippuden, uh, well, part two. Like, I don't see this being printed on its own. I feel like this being thrown in into something 
else, but mm. a version of his own battle back in Konoha as he was trying to control Kurama within Kushina. Yes, Minato is the kind of character who had the world thrust upon him for the entirety of his short, short life. And it's that responsibility that shaped the man we know as Minato. But before we can get to the man that was Minato, we have to first start with the child. And thus, we're going to start today's video off in the way that we tend to start these kinds of videos off at the beginning. See, we don't know a yes. massive amount about the backstory of Minato, though we do know that Minato's motivations as a child are very similar to that of his child. That is to say, when Minato entered Konoha Shinobi Academy, he entered it with the dream of one day the leading Konoha Hokage. as the Hokage. Now, obviously, the foundation of Minato's desire to become Hokage is vastly different from Naruto's, as Minato comes from a no-name clan and didn't have Kurama sealed inside of him, and therefore, rather than just trying to disprove what all the oh, we got movie clips. Movie clips. The sins of Konoha thought Minato just wanted to be Hokage. But that isn't to say that the core reason of why Minato wanted to become Hokage wasn't similar to that of Naruto's, as the core tenet of Minato's entire character is that he is a protector. He protects, or at least yearns to protect, everybody who's important to him. And this becomes incredibly apparent to us very early on in Minato's story. See, when Minato was around nine years old, Kushina, who would later become the last of the Uzumakis in Konoha, was moved to Konoha to supersede Mito as the next Jinchuriki of Kurama. And while Minato didn't know Kushina, he was immediately drawn to the hue of her hair, which instilled in him the ideology that he wanted to be close to Kushina. And thus, Kushina is the first person in Minato's circle of future protection. The first it's just instant connection. It's like, ah, it's, it... as much of a monster he was, he was also a really kind bloke. First person he's identified that is truly worth protecting. But the circle would get larger and rather quickly. Simento graduated from the Shinobi Academy about a year or so after Kushina shows up in Konoha, as the data books tell us that he graduated from the Shinobi Academy at 10 years old, two to three years sooner than your average Shinobi Academy student would. Now, Minato is allowed to graduate early from the Shinobi Academy for two reasons. The first of which is that he is a once in a generation level genius, and there was basically nothing left for him to learn at the Shinobi Academy. And the second reason is the Shinobi Academy, though it shouldn't have this rule has a rule that allows for the expedition of genius level students to graduate early from the academy so that they can go on to become genin and chunin and jonin and while this technically flies directly in the face of the reason the shinobi academy was founded in the first place there is still technically checks and balances in place to make sure 10 year olds can't go to war and that check and balance is called the chunin exam however children are only ever accelerated through the shinobi academy in times of war in fact we were taught this by itachi's light novels because itachi Itachi was the last student to ever be accelerated through the Shinobi Academy because of his level of genius. And thus, the real reason that Minato was accelerated through the Shinobi Academy wasn't actually because he was a genius, but more because the Second Great Shinobi World War had just started. And thus, genius level candidates had to be accelerated through the process of becoming a tuning so that they could eventually end up on the battlefield. However, mm. even before Minato was accelerated through the Shinobi Academy to end up in the tuning exam so he could go battle against against Han and Roshi. Minato, as a Genin, after graduating from the Shinobi Academy and being placed on Team 6 under Jiraiya's tutelage, was already dealing with and fixing international incidents. See, when Kushina was kidnapped by the proverbial bad guys of the pre-Naruto Naruto timeline, the Hidden Cloud, Minato was not only able to track down, but also take down three Joni, who came from the second most powerful village in the entirety of the Naruto universe. And this was the first- Like, already already that young beast first time that we ever truly saw to the center of minato a character who would do anything to protect those he loves even if it's taking on a 3v1 against opponents who should be stronger than him yeah, and this kind of thing <laughs> would become consistent for the likes of minato as he would time after time after time again place himself in scenarios where he was technically the underdog just to come out victorious to protect those he loved now fortunately for minato he was placed under pretty much the best tutelage he could have gotten Jiraiya. And while that was an ideal case scenario for Minato, it probably wasn't an ideal case scenario for the other members of Team 6. Who people theorize were Teiuchi and Mikoto Uchiha, uh... because Jiraiya has pretty much an instant interest in Minato as a shinobi, and in that moment decides to take Minato on as his apprentice. Pretty much saying, go figure it out to the rest of Team 6, like Kakashi did to oh, yeah, what happened? Oh, okay. Naruto and Sakura. Which is why people theorize that both Teiuchi and Mikoto didn't end up being Jonin for the rest of their lives. 
lives. In fact, we don't even know if Teuchi ever became a Jonin. We do know that Mikoto eventually became one, though. But Jiraiya okay. had obviously heard years prior to taking on Manito as a student that he would eventually be the teacher for the Child of Prophecy, which he would, at one point, believe was Nagato, but currently believed was Minato. And thus, Jiraiya made it his goal to make Minato as strong as possible. No, you would, wouldn't you? It's like, wait, okay, I'm destined to potentially bring the, you know, prof... prof Prophesized child to the world. Um, as soon as you see anyone with potential, you just go for it, wouldn't you? So we could live up to this prophecy, teaching him a myriad of different abilities, but the most important of which obviously being Toad Sage Mode. And thus at the age of roughly 10 years old, Minato, a possible Genin at this moment in time, was not only working under the tutelage of Jiraiya, one of the strongest ninjas of all time, but it also foiled the plan of the Hidden Cloud to abduct the next gen Cherokee of Kurama, which led to Minato, a child ninja gaining worldwide renown as the new up and coming, possibly strongest ninja Ninja on Earth. And in that moment, just how Kushina had a target on her back for her massive life force and her future of being Kurama's Jin Cherokee, Minato, as the next prodigy of the leaf, also got a target on his. But the fact that every Makes village sense. not only wanted Kushina dead, but also Minato, never stopped him from braving any kind of elements. See, Minato and Kushina, from the moment that Minato saved her from the Hidden Cloud, were a couple. In fact, by the time of both of their deaths, they'd been together over a decade. However, after Minato returned back to Konoha with Kushina, it was established that Mito was now too old and too frail to hold on to Kurama, and that Kushina was ready. And thus, Kurama was transferred over right. to Kushina using the eight trigram seal. Now, little did Minato or Kushina know, but the love that Minato gave Kushina was actually a major factor in her being able to control, control Kurama. Right. See, because what Mito sense. had said some cryptic right. things to Kushina, like, oh, keep love in your heart and you'll be able to beat back the darkness of the power like, of quite Kurama. Literally. She didn't exactly say, hey, if you have somebody you love, a part of their chakra will exist in your eight trigram seal, and that part of their chakra will be in a constant and perpetual battle against Kurama to keep them at bay. But she's a grandma. They talk in riddles. And because Kushina <laughs> didn't know how the eight trigram seal worked, and therefore Minato didn't know how it worked, in keeping with the ideology of him being a protector of those that he loves, Minato, while embroiled in the Second Great Shinobi World War, while possibly 14 years old, was also being tutored in sealing jutsus from both Kushina and God Jiraiya. Damn, it as Minato going on. wanted to be able to fight back against Kurama should he ever break out of Kushina. He also wanted to be able to understand and augment the eight trigram seal in case Kushina ever needed help with it. And thus Minato had to split his time between fighting in the Second Great Shinobi World War and trying to gain more knowledge in Fuenjutsu to help Kushina. See, because Kushina at this time was only allowed to exist within a certain part of Konoha. A certain part of Konoha where a massive Fuenjutsu seal existed on the ground that helped her keep control over Kurama. And Minato and Kushina wanted Kushina to see the world. However, before Minato was able to accomplish that goal, he had to go fight in one of the deadliest ninja conflicts of all time, the Second Great Shinobi World War. And this is where we pick up with him in the Joe, beginning yeah. of his one shot. See, we see a 14 year old Minato who looks wow. way older than 14 in a confrontation against Han and Roshi, who the Minato one shot has revealed to us are apparently perfect in Cherokee. I say that because in the beginning of this one shot, both Han and Roshi unleash tailed beast forms Beaches, and fire tailed bombs, beast balls but... at Minato, Jiraiya, and some other random shinobi. Knowing that he didn't have the ability to stop these tailed beast balls and defend his teammates, Minato instead used his opportunity to use his flying Raijin to get, get himself dry and the rest of get his out teammates of out of the battle, immediately dropping them back in Konoha. And this is why Minato was able to be on the front lines of the Second Great Shinobi just World War and keep an eye on Kushina, flying Raijin. However, seeing these tailed beast balls gave Minato an idea. See, Minato understood that other villages were using Jinchurikis as weapons, and therefore there was a fair possibility that at some point if Konoha got desperate enough that it would use Kushina, the love of his life, as a weapon. Back, However, yeah. Minato, because he didn't understand Fuenjutsu, because Kushina didn't understand Fuenjutsu, couldn't help Kushina become the perfect Jinchuriki that Han and Roshi already I've were. Become, and thus, yeah. Minato had to find a way to create a jutsu for Kushina that would allow her to battle against those who could use tailed beast bombs. And thus, this sent Minato off on the three-year journey of creating and perfecting the Rasenka, a jutsu that was originally meant so cool for Kushina. That. Oh wait, actually, now that I'm rereading Minato's one shot, I realize we see the grown-up versions of the rest of Team Six, and that is not mm -hmm. Teyuchi or Mikoto. They're 
They're both men. Now, technically, the timeline is a bit hazy here because, yes, we know it took Minato three years to create the Rasengan, and it appears as though the tailed beast ball he sees that inspires him to create the Rasengan happens like a day before he figures out creating the Rasengan in the one shot. But this actually shows us something even more impressive about Minato. See, this shows us that from the second that the Second Great this Shinobi World War started, it. Minato was involved. That is to say that ever since Minato became a Genin, and then possibly hand. a Chunin, and saved Kushina from the Hidden Cloud, he was thrusted almost immediately after gaining the renown of somebody who just skirted an international incident straight into the Second Great Shinobi World War. And that makes sense when you consider the rest of the timeline, because the Hidden Cloud breaking into Konoha to steal Kushina is only something they would do during wartime. And mm -hmm. thus it could be argued that the first time that Minato was ever openly involved in the Second Great Shinobi World War was when he saved Kushina. This would also explain why in the beginning of Minato's one shot, he understands that a tailed beast ball is not to be messed with. It wasn't his first time seeing them. And thus this confirms the reason why Minato was accelerated through the Shinobi Academy, because he was needed in the war as soon as possible. And thus Minato's life from the age of 10 years old was never truly his, which could pretty clearly and easily explain why he turned out to becoming such a protector. See, Minato, for the majority of his life, ever since his genius was recognized in the Shinobi Academy, was thrust into dangerous situations where he and he alone was the person who could fix them. Now, there's two ways that somebody can mature when you're thrust into these kind of situations perpetually. Either you can resent all of these situations you're placed in, or you can Rise find your own reason amongst the chaos mm. to buy in. And the second perfectly explains Minato. Yep. Minato saw the Second Great Shinobi World War not as an opportunity to beat back other nations, but as an opportunity to protect Kushina. He understood that the more damage he did on the front lines, the less chance that so Kushina would ever be placed out. on them. Yeah. However, he was a realist and pragmatic, and he understood that war was all-encompassing. And thus, after seeing the terrifying power of a fully transformed Jinchuriki, he decided to create a jutsu well, for Kushina <laughs> in the possibly likely event that she also ended up on the front line with him. And while this might not necessarily sound like an underdog story, because it's Minato we're talking about here, this means that Minato, who fought in the Second Great Shinobi World War for three years, was between 11 and 14 that. was not only the center stone of Konoha's offensive against the hidden stone and the hidden sand but was also mounting a battle against himself to create a jutsu strong enough to counter the tailed beast ball and in this moment Minato was placing himself in a disadvantageous situation a 2v1 himself versus himself and war. But this is the kind of thing that Minato should be able to do. Because in Minato's one shot, when Kushina chains up her guards and leaves her boundary, she begins to lose control of Kurama, manifesting yeah, a version of the Jinjuriki yeah. cloak mm. that goes out of control and attacks Minato. Minato, even after being attacked by an incredibly strong version of the person he loves, keeps a cool head and augments Kushina's eight trigram seal in his own style. A feat so impressive, Kurama actively compares him to Hashirama. And even after a version two Jinjuriki cloak of Kurama punches a hole in Minato's stomach, he's still he's able to, with the power he's placed inside of Kushina's 8 trigram seal, defeat Kurama with a Rasengan, cementing to Kushina that Minato would always be a part of her. But this isn't the only time that Minato sprung to protect those around him when the odds were stacked against him. See, after the conclusion of the Second Great Shinobi World War, Minato went on to become a leader of Geni, and he was given a team of Geni consisting of Rin, Obito, and what a Kakashi. Team. And while in the manga, the first thing they ever do is a bell test, which is obviously done by Minato to establish teamwork between his new Geni, ensuring that they would always do what they could in order to cover each other's weaknesses and protect each other when it mattered most, the anime actually added, prior to the bell test, a slight side story between Minato and Kakashi that I believe plays well into both of their stories. Okay. See, well, obviously the bell test is incredibly important, and we love seeing every generation of Genin try to get those bells from a way stronger Jonin. Yeah, cool. In the anime, Hiruzen actually gives Minato a special task, the task of helping Kakashi get over the death of his father. Huh? See, Kakashi, before right. falling under the tutelage of Minato, was a stickler to the rules. He believed that everything should be done by the book because of how his father, Sakamo Hatsuke, was disgraced by the village after foregoing a mission to save a comrade. But if you think about it, this ideology runs completely opposite to what we're saying about Minato throughout the duration of this video. That Minato was the kind of person who would place himself against all odds in order to save those he loves. Mm -hmm. And thus Minato's commitment to try and make Kakashi see the human side of being a Shinobi that caring for those around you and doing what you can to protect them isn't a weakness, but instead a strength, plays not only perfectly into who Minato is as a person, but also plays perfectly into Kakashi's character development. And thus Minato trying yeah. to perpetuate the strength of trying to help those around you to Kakashi. God, yeah, because Kakashi carries so much of, like, um, what Minato says, but also Obito as well. Like, he, like, 
some of his big quotes earlier on turn out to be him repeating stuff that he heard from he other people. He is a through line we see throughout the entirety of their relationship. And in no part of their relationship is that more clearly seen than when Minato gives the bell test to Team Minato. See, when you think about it, every single bell test that we've ever seen, that is, the three Sonin, Team Minato, and Team Seven, has all had a couple of things in common. And that is that the teams that were trying to get the bell off of their Jonin consisted of a screw-up, somebody in the middle who hadn't really realized their power quite yet, and a childhood genius. And in the case of Team Minato's attempt, Minato went easy with Rin and Obito, but substantially less easy with Kakashi, who was able to slightly push him. But Minato needed to encourage Kakashi to use teamwork to try and get the bells off of him. And Kakashi realized this, but not in the way he was supposed to. See, Kakashi realized that in order to get the bells and to pass this exam, Minato wanted them to use teamwork. And thus, Kakashi uses Rin and Obito as a means to an end, not as teammates. However, because they did, in fact, work as a team, Minato does end up passing them, but he still takes the time to encourage his newly found team to increase their teamwork, something that Kakashi, who views Obito and Rin as dead weight, doesn't listen to. And this is what's so incredibly interesting about Kakashi and Minato's dynamic. See, while Minato was the kind of person who would do anything to protect those he loves, going so far as to place himself in incredibly disadvantageous situations in order to make sure that the people around him get out of them, Kakashi, in the beginning of his story, is the exact opposite. Yeah. However, with time, he slowly but surely adapts to Minato's ideology. Oh, but the true difference yeah, between does. Minato and Kakashi is the opportunity to act on that sentiment. Because while Minato is constantly placed in situations Situations where he can act on the sentiment of wanting to protect those around him, Kakashi is stuck in a perpetual cycle of being protected by the ones he loves most and losing them because of it. And thus, ironically, the ideology that Minato instills in Kakashi is kind of Kakashi's undoing. But see, Minato establishes to Kakashi during the duration of the Third Great Shinobi World War and their time as a team together that Kakashi needs to be less of a stickler for the rules, that he needs to elect to protect the people he loves rather than the mission he's on. And slowly but surely, Kakashi does adapt to this ideology. But he is then saved by falling rocks by Obito, saved from cutting down Rin by Rin, saved from the remaining hidden Mishinobi by an enraged Obito and saved from Kurama by Minato and Kushina. Time after time after time again, even though Kakashi wants to protect those around him, because. he's too slow to the draw. Yeah. And the irony here is that both Rin, Obito, and Minato simply embodied the ideology of protecting those around them more than Kakashi did. did. See, yeah. because while at the end of the bell test, when Minato was telling his team of Genin they needed to work more on their teamwork, Obito and Rin fully agreed with him. For Kakashi, that plea fell on deaf ears. And thus, in Team Minato, Minato was able to install the idea of protecting those important to you, in himself, obviously, and into Obito and Rin. And while he was able to get that idea into Kakashi's head, the skeletons in his closet of his father's disgrace and subsequent suicide kept him from ever fully embracing that ideology as much as Rin or Obito or his mentor. Which is why it might seem somewhat perplexing that during the mission to destroy Kanavi Bridge, Minato, who was needed on the front lines to assist in a battle against the Hidden Stone where there was 50 Hidden Stone Shinobi trying to wipe out four remaining Konoha Shinobi, transferred leadership of Team Minato over to Kakashi while he was away. But as it currently stood, Kakashi had recently become a Jonin and Obito and Rin were Chunin, and thus electing him as the leader while Minato was away was the logical thing to do. But this places Kakashi as the new leader of the team into an incredibly precarious situation, as the leader should always be in charge of protecting those they're leading. And therefore, while obviously making Kakashi the leader of Team Minato while Minato was away had to do with rank, it was also a test being done by Minato to see if Kakashi would truly step up into his role as a protector. All the while, Minato was living up to that ideology at its utmost. As Minato, though he didn't want to step away from his team, especially during an important mission in the Third Great Shinobi World War, was needed to turn the tides in an unfair battle, a 50v4, which he was able to turn the tides on almost immediately. Easily. Well, some will say this is the battle where Minato killed a thousand shinobi, because Inoki says in the anime he sent 1,000 shinobi into Konoha and Minato single-handedly sent them all packing. What's actually being said here is that Inoki sent 1,000 shinobi into Konoha and Minato killed the remaining 50 after a subsequent battle they should have won against Konoha because there was only four shinobi left. But that's a bit more long-winded and less sexy. And because Minato
Naruto is in it a perpetual cycle sexy. of trying to wage as many battles as possible. <laughs> Immediately after winning a battle for Konoha, while substantially outnumbered, Minato made his way back to his team as fast as he could, where he found Kakashi and Rin surrounded by Iwa Shinobi. But Minato, being Minato, mops up the Shinobi and saves Kakashi and Rin, and he and the rest of Team Minato return to Konoha to mourn Obito. See, this is a worst-case scenario for Minato. And it happens to him twice. See, Minato is the living embodiment of the ideology that there's only so much one person can do. do Minato yeah. is one of the strongest ninjas in the history of Konoha and has the ability to teleport places instantaneously. Instantly. And yet no amount of speed allowed for him to return back to his team in time to save Obito. Because he, as one of the most important people in Konoha, had a series of competing obligations. He was needed to turn the tides in battles, while he was also needed to destroy incredibly important bridges. And this is the burden of responsibility. See, because while Minato is supposed to be the manifestation of what humankind could accomplish if we were all just better people and stronger, he's also supposed to act as an embodiment of hubris. See, because while Minato himself wasn't overly confident or haughty, he showed us that even with what seems to be infinite power, we can't protect everyone. Mm. He shows us that while we can have lofty ideologies that are incredibly altruistic, sometimes the world is sadistic. And thus, after losing Obito while away during the Kanabi Bridge mission, once again during the Third Great Shinobi World War, Minato is sent away on a mission. And while Minato is away on this mission, Madara orchestrates the kidnapping of Rin. This not only leads to her subsequent death, but also leads to emotional turmoil for both Kakashi and Obito. That eventually, technically, brings about the Fourth Great Shinobi World War. But because what Minato was able to pull off was so incredibly impressive during the Third Great Shinobi World War, regardless of the loss of two of his tuning, Minato in the wake of the Third Great Shinobi World War and the stepping down of Hiruzen to take the blame of all of the previous wars onto himself, was elected the Fourth Hokage. And I mean, what else are you gonna do with a guy who literally battled against A and Killer B simultaneously to a standstill? I mean, he even called his own shot. He literally told A, we'll probably meet again as Kake. And Hokage Hokage is exactly what Minato always wanted to be. And now as Hokage, he should be able to spread out his power of protection to more people, right? Well, yes, of course. But like we've already established, Minato is meant to show us that the wider the net gets, the bigger the holes. See, yes, now, of course, Minato had access to more resources than he had ever had access to prior. Having a Hokage guard platoon, he was able to teach the flying Raijin so that they could accompany him everywhere he went. But as the entire village now became people that Minato had to protect, Minato began to lose sight of the people that he had already sworn to protect previously. Like Akashi, who, after Rin's death, had joined the Ambu after Minato said it would be a good place for him to be. And it was actually Hiruzen, not Minato, who told Minato that Kakashi should not be in the Ambu. That the Ambu was seeping darkness into his soul that Kakashi would soon not be able to replace. Yes. The Ambu is not a good place. Like, every story you get told about everyone that was in there, it's not good. And thus it was man. Hiruzen who told Minato that Kakashi should be assigned to protecting Kushina. Minato's pregnant wife. And it was because of the broadened horizons of Minato's now incredible protection network that Minato even began to slip up on his ability to protect his wife, the first person he ever elected to protect at all costs. See, Minato was aware of the fact that Kushina's eight trigram seal would weaken during her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And because of this, Kushina was to give birth to Naruto in a remote location away from the village that was sealed off both with ninjutsu and Ambu members. However, Minato, because he was so sure that everything would be fine with Kushina, decided to give Kakashi the day that Kushina was due off because they were celebrating. A mistake that eventually cost his and his wife's God, life. Imagine. See, only mere minutes after Naruto was born, Minato began to make the preparations to fix Kushina's now weakened 8 trigram seal. However, it's in that moment that Toby, Obito, appears and kills all of the Ambu guards and midwives that Kushina had. And in the moment that Toby appears, he takes Naruto hostage and tells Minato to back away from Kushina to stop repairing her seal. Now, Minato obviously gets Naruto back in a heartbeat, but when he gets Naruto back, he realizes that there's explosive tags on Naruto. And thus, Minato has to teleport the explosive tags away from Naruto and Kushina, leaving Toby to kidnap Kushina. And Mental. now, once again, Minato was fighting 
two battles at once. See, because Minato now had his newborn child, who he had to teleport to a... Yeah, it's far too much thrown at him so quick in this location. situation. But while he was focused on protecting his newborn, Kushina was in grave danger. And thus, Minato had to teleport back to Kushina as fast as he possibly could in order to stop her from being killed by the releasal of Kurama. But Kurama was already released while Minato was protecting Naruto. And thus, a new battle emerged for Minato. The protection of Konoha. And thus, in this moment where Minato becomes Kurama's opponent for the second time in his life, he has to immediately teleport a tailed beast ball away from Konoha. Which is so his flying sick. Rush. But as soon as Minato so was cool. able to get his bearings and establish himself as Kurama's opponent, Obito also flew in and attempted to warp him away from Konoha so he couldn't tell Hirazin how he needed help. But Minato was able to dodge the Kamui and was now embroiled in combat against Obito. Now, the problem with this is that there was now nobody. I think they're doing some drilling next door, which is the Annoying, but I don't think you can hear it. I'm only just hearing it. Oh, now that mm, anyway. He's strong enough to take on Kurama inside of the village fighting Kurama, and thus the people that Minato was supposed to protect as the Hokage, the citizens of Konoha, were dying. Because once again, Minato was fighting too many wars. But after Minato was able to defeat Obito and release Kurama from the sealing contract that Obito had placed on him, Kurama begins to flee from Konoha, only fighting against the ninjas who were following him. But as Kurama is about to fire another tailed beast ball in Konoha's direction, Minato drops Gamma Boont on him. Finally, he gathers enough chakra to teleport Kurama to Kushina and Naruto's location. And in this moment, Kushina and Minato found themselves toe-to-toe -to -toe against Kurama. And they were the only people who would be able to fight him as Kushina erected an adamantite chain barrier that would stop anybody from either leaving or entering. Now, a lot of people ask in this moment, why didn't Minato just seal Kurama back into Kushina? And the answer is because it wouldn't have saved her. In no, fact, the first she idea that died. Kushina says when Minato teleports Kurama to her location is seal Kurama back into me so that he can die with me, implying that even if she had Kurama sealed back into her, she still would have died. But Minato and then the we wouldn't know where Kurama's going. So it's like do that they but they, she dies karama disappears and then the way it works he could appear anyone after that or appears anywhere whereas in this situation we know where Kurama's at. Position. Not because he doesn't want Kushina to die. I think he's fully aware that she's going to mm. die at this point. But because instead, Kurama's power will be needed one day whenever Toby decides to attack Konoha again. And it's at this point that Minato remembers the child of prophecy story that Jiraiya had told him. And he decides in this moment that Naruto is in fact that child, child of, prophecy, of prophecy. And that Naruto would need the power of Kurama in order to become that child of prophecy and save the world. But Kurama's chakra is too enormous to seal inside of an so infant, and thus Minato only seals half of Kurama's chakra into Naruto, using the Reaper Death Seal to seal the other half inside of himself. But before Minato is able to seal the entirety of Kurama away, both him and Kushina are impaled by Kurama, who stop his fingernail from killing Naruto. And in this moment, many of you would probably say, oh, this was Minato and Kushina's final act of protection for their son. And while yes, it technically is. Much truer and more poignant reasoning behind this scene is to show that Minato never protected anyone. See, well, obviously, the sum of everything Minato did during his life amassed to a greater good for Konoha. Every single person that Minato was ever supposed to protect dies, with the hmm. exception of one person. And that one person is Naruto. See, the first person that Minato ever established himself to be the protector of is Kushina. Minato's lax approach to her security during her birth of Naruto led to her subsequent death at the hands of Obito and Kurama. On top of that, Minato, while away fighting the wars of Konoha, also lost his two Chunin. Obito and oh, Rin. Rin. And while, yeah. yeah, you can say, oh, Obito didn't die, that's not important in the context of this conversation. He, On top of that, Minato's only surviving student, Kakashi, was plagued by the ideology that Minato instilled in him. The idea that the people doing the missions are more important than the missions themselves is what cast Kakashi into an infinite darkness he almost didn't crawl back out mm. of. See, because the first task that Minato was ever given as it pertained to his Genin team was saving Kakashi from that very same pit of despair he would find himself in in almost a decade later. And while first it appeared as though Minato was able to do that by making Kakashi appreciate his teammates, by Minato sacrificing himself and having the inability 
to save Kushina, who Kakashi was assigned to protect. Minato, in essence, broke the back of Kakashi that he had helped fix, throwing Kakashi into a pit of despair that dwarfed the one he dwelled in as a child. But why? What did Minato do to deserve acting as a human embodiment of hubris? Why did Minato, the proverbial golden boy of Naruto, deserve to have everything he ever loved stripped from it? Well, the reasoning is twofold. One, to remind us that good, regardless of how powerful it seems, doesn't always necessarily prevail. And that while the mm. ideology of protecting everybody around you is noble, it's highly unrealistic. And two, because Minato was- You can't ha well, yeah, you're right. I've learned this recently, last, like, few, well, last few years. You can't help everyone. You cannot help everyone. ...wasn't the child of prophecy. In fact, he was technically a false prophet. An unrelenting force of good not yet strong enough to protect everyone. But there's a silver lining to Minato's story. And that silver lining is that Minato was strong enough to protect one person and that one person was Matters. strong enough yeah. to protect everyone and that is wow. the real yeah, message nice. of minato as a character that's the lovely, truth that. to the core of his design that we don't have to be strong enough to protect everyone we just have to be strong enough to protect one what? person because if all mm. of us are strong enough to protect at why least is that making me tear person, up that's lovely and the numbers are on our side because there is those who were born with the ability to protect everyone much more than one so yeah. a minuto's story might seem oh. like a story of tragedy in actuality it's a story of triumph as oh. small and trivial as it may seem and that is why he's my favorite character that's a really character nice several shades deeper than oh. even big minuto fanboys begin to realize a somewhat paradoxical story of hubris pride and weakness all wrapped up in one yellow flash and if you guys agree with my character analysis on minato I love and enjoy it. me popping back into these character deep dives tell me in the comments below please oh, you guys are down there please i'm gonna go back and check like some video, more of these out. that was page, lovely oh uh. noty bell now i am gonna go save myself from hunger <laughs> oh you made me tear up at the end there that was it, well, that was really enjoyable. Really cool to see all the stuff. Because obviously, I know a lot about Minato, but there's certain bits and bobs. It's always nice to watch these videos and then go, oh, because I'm an idiot. I forget stuff. Or, it's, you know, I've not read, like, uh, the light novels or uh, certain data books, so I miss out on certain bits and bobs. But, um, yeah, very, very cool uh, look at, at Minato. I really, really enjoyed that. And... Um, yeah, I want to check out some more, you know, nothing about, because uh, like I said, I've done Itachi, if I'm looking at my phone before, I've done Itachi and the Ambu. Um, so, yeah, there's more to go for. If you guys have one specifically that you think I, I should check out next, let me know in the comments. Uh, but I really enjoyed that. That was boss. And I'm definitely going to be checking more of NC Hammer. Thank you, NC Hammer 23. Thank you to my patrons. If you want to rename at the end of every video and want to be able to watch patron only reactions such as the original Dragon Ball series, link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all I ask to help support channels. Greatly appreciate for that. Thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? If you guys think of this, click like, subscribe, and leave comments below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos, and I'll see you guys. All you guys next time.